Hi everyone, Sue Reynolds with you again, and this is the third video um, as we are preparing for Council Meeting 5 on activities. So yeah, so just as a reminder, the first video was um, on some prep that we needed to do before the meeting. Um, the second video was on actually facilitating the meeting. And now we want to look through some crosswalk reports that are really going to help you determine the strength of the activities that you've planned. So, okay, I'm going to go to the process page. And again, I'm in um, this, um, I've been up here, we've been working on the, uh, in section eight. So we did the first part of section eight in video one, the second part of, of section eight in video two. And now in this third video, we want to look at the crosswalk reports. So this is um, an activity that you would do with the steering team. Um, and again, it's just to give you a sense of the strength of your activities and if they're really going to do what you want them to do. So the first thing we want to do is to print uh, this crosswalk notes form. This is just something where you can write down some notes as you're working through the different crosswalk reports. So I'll show you the form real quickly. It looks like this. Um, and there are the primary crosswalk reports. There's five of those. And you can just check, I'm happy with this crosswalk and no action is needed. Or you, if you need to uh, add an activity or get rid of an activity or whatever, you can um, just jot yourself a little note um, as you're working through, working through the reports. And then later you can go back to the activity entry section and make the adjustments that you want to. So there's the primary crosswalks, and then there's a couple of crosswalks um, that we think are really helpful, but um, we've made them optional. We know that things are really busy, especially right now. Um, but there's the guidance knowledge crosswalk, and then the student opportunities crosswalk. I'll show you those in a sec. Um, and then there's external crosswalks. So if you've said you've been doing some of the activities to meet external requirements, um, you can check to see did, did you actually do that. So, okay, so let's go to those crosswalks. And here's how it works. So I would go to the um, uh, first crosswalk report. And this is one of the five primary reports that we do want you to submit to us that you're happy with the report. So the first one is the focus and priority goals. So I'll open that up. And the computer has um, listed your focus goals and your priority goals. And basically it's telling you again, here's the, the data that where you're hoping to get, and here's your activities. So you would just look and see, okay, you have academic goals for the coming school year. Is this activity going to get me to whatever percent to the 90% that I put in here? Um, if you're happy with that, fine. If you're not happy with that, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, that, that's not gonna cut it. There's only 8% of the kids. I need, if I'm really gonna hit that goal, I need to do something differently. Then jot a note down on that, that notes form and then go back to the activities and adjust activities until you're happy with this. And then we would go to the, to the next one, priority goals. Remember a priority goal is something that you're already addressing, but you're looking here and you've got a red flag, no associated activities. That would tell you that you forgot to put an activity in, or maybe you thought you were doing addressing a priority goal, but you're really not, and you need to you know, make this not be a priority goal. So on all of these, as you're checking through, you always have the, the option, if you're not happy with something, of adjusting the activities or adjusting the priority goal or the focus goal. So if you don't think you can put in all the activities for a focus goal, you might wanna turn it into a priority goal and, and not have it be a focus goal. So this is just kind of your final check. This, of all of the crosswalk reports, this one is the most important. And of all of the information on this, the most important information is the focus goals. Because remember, that's what you've really committed to changing. You know, you've said you're going to hit this 90% on the survey and 100% on, on academic goals in your file drawer in your office. 
you know, and if, if it, we really need to have activities that are going to make that happen. So again, if you're not happy, if those things aren't aligning, then you can choose to adjust the activities or choose to adjust the focus goal. So, okay, so that's that report. And, you know, if you're happy, then you would just go back to the process page and you're going to say, okay, for this first one, I'm just going to, I'm happy with it the way it is and I'm going to submit it, and then you use the typical submit button. Um, when our team looks at that, we're gonna be asking ourselves the same question. We're gonna look at that report and think, okay, let's look at all those activities. If the school does those activities well, are they gonna reach that, that target? Um, and if so, then, you know, then, then we're happy. If we don't think you're gonna reach that target, then we'll you know, be sending you a message saying, gosh, you know, hey, there's only 8% of the kids that participate in that activity. I don't think you're really gonna get the 90% with that. So, so we'll be pushing back a little. Um, we want to uh, make sure that you're successful next year in reaching those targets. So we'll, we'll really look at that. Okay, so that's the focus particle crosswalk. The next one is the social emotional issues crosswalk. So in there, the report is giving me the social emotional issues and then the activities that I have in place to address that. And again, if you're happy with this, um, fine. In this case, um, I would be thinking I either need to put activities in for making friends because I don't have any activities in there. Um, maybe I've forgotten something. Or maybe I just don't have the time to work on three different social emotional issues. And so I would take uh, you know, one or two of these social emotional issues out. So again, the, we're just kind of looking, you know, are your activities, are your, your, your social emotional issues, the goals you have in those areas, are you happy? Are, is, this, is this plan, are the activities really going to do what you want them to do? So, okay. The third one is the activity and purposes crosswalk report. Um, this is another one I really like. So um, in this, we have listed the activity, and again, I'm in a demo school, um, so I'm not sure why this is blank. I, I would need to go back and click and fix this to get rid of this activity since it really doesn't have one listed there. So, um, so on this next one, the academic planning workshop, right now I don't have that activity associated with any of my goals. So why would I be doing this activity? Um, so yeah, so that would make me think maybe I should leave this activity out or maybe there's a goal that I forgot to put in. So all of your activities should be aligned with one of your goals. If not, why are you doing the activity? If you have an activity that's not aligned with a goal, then you would be thinking, should I leave that activity out or did I forget a goal and I really need to put a goal in there? So there should be no red flags on this. And uh, you know, we've given you buttons where you can fix this and um, you can go in and, and make the adjustments that you need to make. So again, um, we don't want any activities that aren't associated with goals. That would just be like a waste of time. So um, you can delete activities or, adjust, or add goals if you need to. Okay, that's the activity purpose crosswalk report. And then the gap group crosswalk is um, one where we've listed the gap groups and then we'll list the activities that you've identified as addressing this group. So when I added all the activities for demo school, which was only three, but when I added those activities, I didn't have any of them where I said, this is an activity that's going to specifically address um, uh, the needs of males uh, having an academic goal. And so then the, um, the, the computer is, you know, flagging that for me because I need to have that. Um, so, okay, so there's that report. And then the next one is the ASCA Mindsets and Behaviors. So in there, we've listed each of the ASCA Mindsets and Behaviors. And again, I only have three goals in here, so our three activities, here's one, um, here's two activities that both were dealing with, with um, goal setting. So. I've got this one, ask a mindset and behavior that's addressed by activities. Here's another one, but most of them aren't. 
Now, it may be okay with you. Um, again, for the old uh, Indiana Gold Star Award, we had to address all of the Indiana indicators, but it's never been like that for ASCA. ASCA has always said, only address the indicators that the mindsets and behaviors that are um, needed in your building, you know, so, so there's no expectation that you address all of the ASCA mindsets and behaviors. They want you to address just the ones that make sense when you look at your school's data. So, um, so when you're looking at your school's focus goals and priority goals, any of them that align with these ASCA mindsets and behaviors, we would expect to see then activities that are also aligned with the ASCA mindsets and behaviors. So we just wanna make sure if you're interested in the ASCA RAMP Award that we're addressing the, um, the mindsets and behaviors that make sense. And the reason that they would make sense is because they're aligned with your school's focus goals and priority goals that came from your school's data, your student data. Um, so, so yeah, so again, I'm gonna say that one more time. The reason an ask a mindset and behavior would make sense for your school is because it aligns with the focus goal or the priority goals that you identified for your school based on your school's data. Uh, in other words, we're not just doing things to please ASCA. ASCA only wants you to address one of their mindsets and behaviors if it aligns with your school's data, and in our case, your school's priority goals or focus goals. So, okay. Um, my guess is you're gonna have more than two that are aligned, um, but again, in, in demo school, I only had a small number of goals in. Um, so there's not a lot. So, okay. So that's the ASCA one. And on each of these, after you've checked it and you're happy, then you would submit it to us and we'll look it over. And again, if we think that there may be issues with it, we'll, we'll jot you a, a note in, in the comment section in our feedback. So, and then you have all of these um, optional reports. And, and again, if you want to see, are we teaching all the guidance knowledge that we addressed? You know, you could open up this report and here's all of the knowledge that you wrote in. And you can see for demo school, I've got an activity that's teaching one, but not the other one. So um, yeah, so all of the knowledge, I would hope that you'd have activities that's going to teach that knowledge that you said was important for your focus goals. Okay, um, so that's the guidance knowledge. Student opportunities crosswalk. Um, that is all of the student opportunities from that self-study. And we're just looking at, do you have activities in place to, to address those opportunities, to, to give students those opportunities? Um, and again, it, you know, it, 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 this is for your information. Um, we're not having you submit it to us, but we think this will be really interesting to see which opportunities you give kids and which opportunities you're not through your activities. Okay, um, that was the opportunities. And then um, the next ones, the next crosswalks all align with external expectations. So here's Indiana's um, um, competencies. So it, when you entered activities, if you checked off the Indiana indicators that they aligned with, each of these indicators then that you're addressing would have activities under it. So you can see again for demo school, I only have a couple of activities in and um, I don't know, yeah, here's one where the activity aligned with one of the Indiana indicators. So um, if you check off the indicators as you're entering activities, this report will tell you which Indiana indicators you're hitting and which you're not. Again, um, because there's not gold star this year, there's not the expectation that you hit all of the uh, indicators. We, our organization is like ASCA. We think you should hit the indicators that your data is pointing you to and not just do an indicator to meet an external expectation. So we are not requiring you to meet all of the Indiana indicators since there's no gold star. Okay, um, then that was Indiana. Indiana graduation pathways. If you check that off as you're entering indicators, here's all of the Indiana pathways, graduation pathways, and then the activities that you put in where you're uh, addressing those, those pathways will, will pop up. 
Um, then it's the same thing for the Indiana Social Emotional Learning Competencies. Um, there's all the learning competencies, and if you check them off as you are entering in the activities, um, they'll, they'll pop up there. Um, and then uh, the DOE Multi-Tiered System of Support, um, that's, those are in there. And then activities, if you've linked your school counseling activities with the, those levels of support, that will appear in the different categories. Um, the 21st Century Scholars Crosswalk, there's all of the different things that students need to do to qualify for their 21st Century Scholars Scholarship. And then this would just show you how you, which activities you have in place to help kids meet those uh, requirements for that scholarship. Um, Indiana Title I um, and Indiana Title IV, um, and then that's it. So again, you're just, after you have those activities in, and if you took care to check off as you're entering the activities, um, the different, you know, as different um, things that those activities were addressing, um, then you'll get really interesting reports um, as you open these up. So, so yeah, um, deadline for all this is May 3rd. Um, and then just a cup, so that's crosswalks, um, very, very simple. And again, the only thing that we want you to tell us is that to submit to us is on these first five reports that, that you're happy with those and then we'll check to kind of look over your shoulder to see if, if we also think that those activities are gonna do what you are saying that they're going to do. So, okay. Um, the community partner soft launch, um, if you have community partners, we wanted to um, give you a, 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 um, a way to uh, enter their activities into the system so that they will also print out in all your reports. So uh, we've, we already did this for demo school, but just a reminder, you can um, edit the delivery methods so if you wanted to enter your teacher advisor activities or your academic integration or parent, parents as advisors, um, um, but my guess is right now you probably have counselor activities and hopefully you'll have some uh, community partners. Um, so you're just gonna edit that. And then, um, I'm in section nine now. Nope, I'm actually beyond that. I'm in 10. Um, and then you're going to enter your community partners. So you would add a school counseling partner and you're just going to say ABC Foundation, uh, Foundation, Joe Smith, then Joe's phone number and his email address. Um, primary delivery method for them is going to be uh, community guidance. And our, our members of this organization, licensed counselors, social workers, psychs, or uh, psychologists, or psychiatrists. So I would say no um, or yes. This is important because if you say that a community organization is going to provide counseling services, but, there's, but then you've said that nobody's licensed, the system will give you a flag. So, okay, so phone number. Ah. and uh, email okay and then we'll just save that organization okay and um going back to the process page um so then when i enter partner activities i am entering an activity just like you do a school counseling activities and then I'm going to say that um, this is a community delivery guidance. And then notice that it gives me the community organizations. So I only have one organization in now. I, I would just say that ABC Foundation is going to do this, enter in everything else about the activity, and then, and then save. So, okay. 
So that's how to get the partner activities in. And again, the advantage of that is then they print out in all the reports. And you know, if you're doing reports for a funder or for your school board or just for your own information, um, you've got that. Okay, and then the very last thing here is, and again, you can see there's nothing to enter. Um, there's just reports until the very last step. Basically, what this is doing is it's pulling out the main reports from all of your work this year. So your council roster, vision statement, priority goals, focus goals, your activities, your annual calendar. Remember that got generated when you were entering activities into the computer. And then the master plan is a report that pulls together everything. Your focus goals, your activities, your root causes. Um, it's, it's your whole system in one report. Um, if you're needing to send a report to a funder or your school board, that master plan would pull it all in together for you. So, um, so we give you just a, um, a, a, a way to check the foundations of your program um, at the end of all of this work. And then um, th you have an option to publish um, your foundations to a public website. So if you want to have your own website for your school counseling program that has all this information in it, you would just uh, click publish and that will create a website for you. So if I wanted to see what that looked like, here's all the different schools that have published their, uh, their portfolios. And if I just click on one, you can see it, it's, here's a URL that I could link to my school's website, but then it gives the public now um, the, uh, your roster and all of your foundations. So yeah, so you have that. Um, you can publish it like right now, I just published demos, demo schools uh, portfolio. So it's now up on that public site. I could get the URL for, for a public URL for all those products. Um, and then if I change my mind, I can just unpublish it, unpublish it. now it's gone, now it's off. So, okay, um, yeah, and that's, that's it. I'm gonna go back to the process page. That is the very last thing um, for this month. And again, it looks like a ton, but remember, it's really only having this one council meeting, getting your activities in, and then the rest of it is just checking things, checking the crosswalks, are you happy with that? checking um, the, the foundations of your final reports and then giving you the option to create a public site where your school board or your parents or who, you know, anyone could get in and see those, those things without having a username and password. So, okay, um, one last thing, just a heads up. Um, next month, we will be working on the next tab. So next month we'll come in here and um, start looking at creating, uh, preparing for your, um, de delivering your activities for, for next year. Um, one thing that's going to change for those of you who have done this with other schools is again, because this is, um, we're not having to worry about the gold star requirements, we're going to reduce this number of lesson plans from nine to one. Um, from our perspective, we just want to make sure that your schools, that schools know how to create a lesson plan. And we think that that can be um, demonstrated with one really well-written lesson plan. So, um, so that will be a lot less work um, than previous schools that were worrying about meeting the gold star requirements will have to do, had to do. Um, some professional development, some program advocacy, um, and then at the very end, just that you're, you're finished with your portfolio and you're wanting us to put your, your school's name on the list of our, our, our C completers. So yeah, so that's it. Notice on this other tab, here's all your foundations. Um, you know, we always on all, of, well, I guess in, in all of our work, you can always get to the, the foundations at the top of the page. So, okay, but that'll be next month. This month we're just working on, on the foundations. So yeah, so that's it. Um, and again, this is just such an exciting month because after all this work, everything falls together. And I hope you can see that, you know, we're not just pulling activities because they're fun or because we have a hunch that they're gonna work. 
you know, we very carefully have thought, this is our focus goal. If we do this, kids are more likely to meet the academic goals in our school improvement plan. This is our focus goal. Here's why kids aren't reaching that goal, the, the root causes, and then here's the activities we're going to do to, to uh, address those root causes so kids will be able to make those choices. And then all the crosswalks to make sure that your activities are doing what you want them to do. And again, I'm just gonna scroll down here one more time. On these crosswalks, the two that are the most important are this one. We will very carefully look to see on those focus goals, are the activities going to pull, going to enable you to reach that focus goal? If you only have one focus goal, we really, really expect to see some major activities. And um, anytime we don't believe that you're going to reach a target, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, if we don't think that your programming is strong enough to get to 100% or 50% or whatever you put in for your focus goal. Um, and then the social emotional crosswalk. If you're saying we're going to address this social emotional issue in our school, then we, again, we would expect to see activities that were strong enough to make a dent on that. Um, and then the third report of the, the big three uh, is this, ac this activities report where we say what the purpose of the activity was. If you have activities that don't have any purpose, then our question is going to be, why are you doing them? Let's get rid of them and, and free up some time. Um, or if you are, do have a goal that's not listed, we need to get the goal in there. And then um, for the schools that are working on ASCA, uh, and also for us, um, this gap group, we want to make sure that you've got a, um, that you're addressing the, the gap group that you've identified uh, for one of your focus goals. So we'll take a look at that. And then if you're seeking the ASCA RAMP award, we'll make sure that you know, at least one of those ASCA mindsets and behaviors you're, you're working on big time. And again, that ASCA mindset and behavior that you're working on should align with your focus goals. If not, we'll think you just pulled it out of thin air. So if it's not aligned with your focus goal or your priority goal, that, that will be, you know, if we're seeing something that's brand new, um, that would, that would be an issue. So we'd wonder why it, why it wasn't in there as a priority goal or a focus goal. So, okay, so those things should align. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, as always, you know, ask us if you have questions, don't hesitate to call. And I know that this is such a crazy time. Um, kind of hoping that without having students knocking on your door because you're not at school, uh, you might have more time available to work on this. I'm not sure how that's working. Maybe, maybe you have office hours from your home. I don't, I don't know. So at any rate, um, I wish you the best of luck and I hope your families stay healthy and your loved ones and your friends. And it's just a really, really hard year, um, hard time. I know in my family, we're isolating ourselves so that we're not adding to the situation. Um, we went out and we have provisions for three weeks. So we're in the house for three weeks. So hopefully um, this all takes care of itself and um, things aren't as bad as some people are projecting. So yeah, so good luck to everybody and call us. We're here. Um, if you need us, you know, just, just give us a call. So, okay, that's it. Thank you, everyone.